All right, so we'll we'll uh, we'll do a quick update. I think we have ten minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. So it might be too much uh, too much stuff here, but um, we'll just do a quick update on uh, Cove. So Cove is the is the name we've been using for confidential VM extensions in RISC Five. Uh, so Atish uh, and I will cover. We we had a presentation we did last uh, LPC where we talked about the sort of the initial foray, what what the split between you know where the TSM would run and what the the ABI would look like, and so we wanted to just give an, give a quick update on sort of where some of the ISA stuff is going in RISC V more recently. Um, so one general sort of concept we introduced in RISC V, and this is an active TG that's working on it, so this is still under discussion um, in the ISA TGs, uh, is this uh, uh, memory tracking table, right? So this is basically a access control um, architecture that allows us to sort of split the RISC V, um, you know, privilege architecture effectively vertically down the line so that you can support multiple supervisor domains. Because what we observed was whether, whether it's like running TEs or running confidential domains, what we wanted to do was, was preserve the ISA so that as people are building these you know, TSM-like components and other things, we can institute them without you know, changing the, allowing them to all access the priv ISA, right? Um, and, and allow some flexibility so that you don't have a particular vendor's TSM that's imposed. You can actually bring your own TSM if needed. Um, so it gives that flexibility. Um, so, so what is supervisor domains? It's basically a provisa pre extension to RISC V that's proposed that adds this memory tracking table, and along with it, there's a couple of other uh, sprinkling of uh, extensions that work with the um, advanced interop architecture in RISC V. So that once you have these separate supervisor domains, one of them could be a confidential computing domain. You can actually assign supervisor domain interop files to them, so that you can preserve all the natural interaction with uh, that the advanced interop architecture proposes. And not have to like you know rejigger all that software that, that's being written for that. Um, so just under the covers quickly again because of lack of time, I, I've put a pointer to the spec at the bottom so you can go look at the in progress spec. The memory tracking table essentially is a very simple structure that essentially operates in conjunction with SV. SV is the 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 paging architecture of RISC V, which has a very similar convention of a first level translation structure that's managed by the OS and a second level guest translation structure that's managed by the hypervisor extension, right? Um, and the memory tracking st structure essentially adds uh, a physical accessor check to the PA that's coming out of the address translation, right? And it's biased more towards large pages. So you take the final PA that's coming out of the translation, you look, at, uh, look up through the memory tracking table, and you essentially get an access or not access allowed for that supervisor domain, right? Um, and the, the root for this uh, MTT structure is hooked into the heart, which is the RISC-V convention for a hardware thread. And there's a CSR through which you, you program it, right? And everything is managed through, um, as this picture showed, through the through the M mode software, right? Which is the core the core TCB. Yeah. Are you concerned about performance and scaling when you're checking another look aside structure every time you want to lock a physical address? So so again, RISC-V doesn't specify implementation, but this architecture could be backed by appropriate caches. So in the worst case, you would even after your nested walk, you'd probably do one additional stuff load if you have the right level of caching, and that should give your you know give you a reasonable performance. So at least that's based on some of the modeling that we've done. But yeah, we, we do expect, expect like high performance architectures to have the right sort of caching models with the MTD structure, right? Um, so I won't go into the bits and bytes levels of the thing. I just wanted to kind of point out it's biased more towards large pages because a lot of the, the you know, MMU models are moving more towards large page, uh, two meg, one gig pages. You can accommodate 4K pages as well in the architecture. And like I said, it doesn't try to do much. It keeps things simple. It basically enforces uh, access allowed or not allowed for the supervisor domains, right? Um, and uh, and so we had, we'd used this picture last time. This is sort of like a high level bird's eye view of the, the Cove architecture. Uh, there's two sort of ways of thinking about it, right? On the, on the, on the right hand side or, or on the left hand side on that slide is the sort of the high performance data center model of the architecture, right? Which looks very much like TDX if folks are familiar with TDX where you have a, a, a peer, um, you know, hypervisor mode extension running as a TSM uh, with the M mode essentially being the, the core TCB that does the context switch between them. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see a client like embedded uh, model of this, which basically is, is using the second level translation structures and is running the TSM as the only root hypervisor. So in that case, you don't really need an MTT. You can just use the second level translation structures as currently defined by the H extension. The idea was to allow both these architectures and keep the ABI the same, right? So, so in RISC-V, you'll basically three, two, you'll see two specs a Cove spec, which talks about the ABI, which is sort of common whether you're using a peer model TSM or a root mode hypervisor TSM. 
and then there is a the smmtt spec which parts which talks about the isa parts right there's also a third spec that samuel just started working on called the cove io abi but that essentially just extends the cove abi for the teio stuff that uh, samuel mentioned yeah when you talk about abi are you talking about guest to tsm abi or tsm to host abi or so both both um, yeah they, they see the the interface that you see here uh, as a, as a... Yeah, the, the interface that you see here, you could think of that as a logical interface between the host and the TSM. And then the second part is the Cove G API, which is basically the GHC XC equivalent, right? Which is the, the guest and the TSM API. So those are both expressed in the same same spec. What's the goal of defining ABI there instead of defining an architectural level, the building blocks and letting software build things? So, yeah, so the, the, the ABI sort of reflects a lot of the RISC-V architecture specific nuances, right, that you see like in the MTT spec or the interaction with the AI spec. So it's sort of more, you, the analog is like, you know, you have these verbs that the TDX module exposes, right, to the, to the platform, right? So on the KVM side, we'll probably have common flows like when you're donating memory or you're converting memory, things like that. But on the on the, you can think of this ABI as sort of the the lower half of that interface. Yeah, right? I got that part. Why though? Like Intel rolled their own and wrote it all, and it's basically firmware, and they're managing it like hardware. Why are you reinventing that for Risk Five, which well, is much more open? And like that's the whole point of it. Like why, if I why are you defining ABI? as part of the architecture that could be software, if I understand correctly. So the, the ABI is software, right? I mean, all of these interfaces that uh, that you see, actually, and I don't have a better picture here, but yeah, the, the interfaces that you see as part of the Cove H ABI or the Cove G ABI, they're all implemented as as software interfaces in, into the reference implementations, right? So we have like a TSM implementation, right? That implements that, that ABI um, and then we have like KVM patches that show how you invoke that ABI, right? So you need an interface into ATSM that understands on the lower half, the RISC-V specific architecture. Is that the same? So when you say the at the lower half understands the RISC-V architecture, is the purpose of the ABI just to define things that there's only one sane way to do this for RISC-V? Uh, no, yeah, so th that that's a fair point. That if somebody wants to roll a different ABI, they definitely can. That's why RISC-V calls it non-ISA. These co ABI specs are all called non-ISA because they have nothing to do with the ISA for RISC-V. Right? They're tracked. If you go to the RISC-V GitHub, you'll see them under the non-ISA tree uh, of RISC-V. Right? And the SMMTT is in the ISA tree of RISC-V GitHub because that that is part of the core ISA. So go, co yeah, co IO, uh, co ABI is just one ABI. Somebody could bring like a global platform ABI and apply it with the uh, RISC-V ISA, and and roll that as well. So summarizing, this is all software that you're building on top of RISC-V hardware. ISA, that's right. Okay. So we have like okay, so the memory tracking table to repeat is ISA, yes. everything else is software, software, software defined and okay. Yep. So the entire right-hand model is basically completely software ABI, completely done with KVM and the, all the open source software. There's no hardware involved. Everything is the GPS basically. <laughs> so that's the POC we did like first whatever very, very early code first policy we are doing and trying to adopt that. But, but, no, but, 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 but remember that even in, even in there, even in that implementation, the TSM that's shown here is specific to RISC-V ISA in the sense that it's written to the H extension as defined yeah. in RISC-V, right? The SMMTT ISA is extending that ISA and adding whatever additional things are needed for supervisor domains, but we still leverage the H extension and the existing priv ISA yeah. in RISC-V. The KVM hat on from an upstream perspective. Why go this route instead of like trying to extend PKVM that ARM has done? So that had I had a couple of slides after that to how do I oh, ABI yeah. and yeah. we can discuss later. So eventual goal is to use this interface to do some kind of PKVM like things, but we can discuss. The, the, the goal here is to get a discussion going. Yeah. Finish it. <laughs> that, that, that's. <laughs> do, do, you, do you want to talk to this? Yeah, we Maybe we could have given twenty minutes instead of ten. So. Uh, yeah, we we have some starter points here for discussion. People can look at it. We'd, we'd appreciate the follow. -up. Well, moving on, Nikunj. Thank you very much, Atish and Ravi. <laughs> Just, uh...